Listen. Welcome to this roundtable discussion about filmmaking in beautiful Copenhagen. Before I introduce our panel of distinguished guests, uh, I want to mention why we are actually here. So this is a cooperation between Olympus and Cinema 5D. And Olympus are putting up exhibitions in different cities around the world where people can experience and interact with photography and imaging. And right now this is happening in Copenhagen while we are using this venue here to record this roundtable discussion. But let me start by introducing our guests. So here to my left, we have uh, Janne Amune. Finnish. Hi. Hi. <laughs> You're a Finnish uh, commercial filmmaker and director. Um, you come from a shooting background and are gradually moving more into directing. Exactly. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so actually, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But Janne pointed Olympus to the potential of their video uh, cameras or the video functionality in their cameras. Um, and some of your recent projects are for Porsche and Polar. Yeah. Very cool. To my left, we have Dirk Wilutski. Um, you're a producer and director and also shooter, and you're best known for Citizen Four, the award-winning and Academy Award-winning documentary about Edward Snowden. And uh, one of your more recent works is in a series for the TV channel Arte uh, called What is to be done about sustainability in our world. Is that mm -hmm. correct? That's Welcome. correct. <laughs> um, here we have Steve Wan, a filmmaker from Germany. You started as a one-man show and moved into directing and cinematography and you studied in Ludwigsburg Film Academy. Yeah. Um, so uh, you do a lot of documentaries and branded content. Um, one film is called Flying Revolution about the Flying Steps breakdance crew. Yeah, it's a feature documentary for cinema about the story of the Flying Steps. Okay, very cool. Then here we have Florian Lein, uh, also from Germany. You work a lot of, uh, have your own production company, work in commercial and corporate filmmaking, um, shooting and directing. And one of your clients is Mercedes AMG, one of your regulars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. And you, I think, are the only one who comes from photography at this panel. Is it's that right? Yeah, it's a basic style with photography and then slowly. Okay, very cool. Yeah. That would be interesting throughout the discussion, I think. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Noah Stesche. Uh, you're a Berlin-based filmmaker and uh, do a lot of fiction music videos, also composer, um, director of White Shadow, an acclaimed film. You, I, know, I know you don't want me to say that, but an acclaimed film uh, that was in cinemas around the world about the plight of albinos, albinos in uh, East Africa. Um, and you also work on a lot of music videos and other stuff that we're going to talk about. So I have talked a lot now, but uh, let me just start this off by saying the obvious thing. Olympus is not known as a, com a company that produces cameras that are used for filmmaking yet. Yet we're all sitting here um, having used their cameras for filmmaking for various reasons. Um, we will talk about the content of the productions that you work on and uh, how you have moved on from different tools to what you're using now and how everything is evolving. But uh, the, one of the similarities, I think, is the type of pro projects that you all work on. A lot of them are kind of documentary style, even though a lot of them are commercial as well. And everybody here, as I said, is familiar with Olympus camera for video. But let's start out with Janne. So you were the one who actually pointed Olympus to the video functionality of that. The, their cameras. How how did that go? Ah, uh, yeah, that was an. <laughs> so it seems um, basically it was a case of case of um, uh, actually I started out in photography as well, and my background with Olympus was from the photography side. I got the chance to use about a bunch of their equipment for certain projects. Um, then we happened to I don't know if I'm allowed to say all of this, uh, but we happened happened upon uh, the EM5 Mark II kind of pre-release thing where, we, where they showed us the camera, made a sudden NDA for a huge sum of money. And that had the, the for the first time, the uh, video stabilization function. And that was the first moment I, rem I remember my exact words, but they were something, do, do you understand what the hell you have here? <laughs> so I was having a lot of those lines in Finnish. And I realized that this is something that 
should not be possible. Like I don't understand the physics of this. I understand gimbals, I understand steady cams, but I don't understand how this is being done in camera. And ever since then, it was a bunch of. Um, I have the chance to work with a great guy from Olympus, Olympus Nordic, and uh, you know he, he listened to us. We told him that you know this is really something you should explore. And when they first released the camera in uh, for the actual release, they had us there showing off some of the video capabilities, and uh, it kind of just picked up from there. Um, we started using it in our in our productions, and you know when the EM1 Mark II came out, it had the same stabilization, um, jacked up to 11 and it actually had a very good picture that we liked that we were able to use and realized that we're they're onto something in this product category that could change the way we work on certain projects so what what exactly does it change for you for me it removes a lot of the gear i need to achieve certain shots um you know it Internal stabilization will not uh, replace steady cams or gimbals. You know, it's, it has its limits, but it also has amazing functionality for such a small package. And what that means for a lot of the pro for a lot of projects where I need to work with non-actors, where I need to work in places where I don't want to draw, draw attention, public spots, and documentary style, but even just things, uh, just stuff where you need to get shots really quickly. You're able to go from something where you're on a skateboard and that looks like a dolly shot. Then 10 seconds later, it looks like you're on a tripod at 300 mil. And you're able to pull those off, you know, with, within five minutes of going from shot to shot, set up to set up. That's something that, you know, the sun is out, you got five minutes, you know, it's, it's setting that can make the shot. And for a lot of those projects, that was the biggest reason. It's, it's such a huge time saver and allows us to get a lot more coverage with a, with a smaller crew. Yeah, I think, Noah, you also got in touch with Olympus for a particular project about something, is that correct? Yeah, uh, I reached out to them because I thought uh, it's interesting to try to have a certain relationship with a camera company, see how that could lead a help a project. I've never done it before. I read a lot about uh, this type of technology because I like to simplify as much as possible the work and minimize the weight of the production, to be able to be intimate uh, and uh, not necessarily stealthy, but that uh, your subjects forget about the fact that it's a production, but whether it is um, documentary or uh, fictional. And uh, I, so I read about it. I saw uh, some tests online from the previous models, and I understood there's an improvement. And uh, I literally um, searched online and found the right contacts. And they were uh, very responsive. And I came to Hamburg and we sat and they introduced the, the, the camera to me. And I've taken it, I've been filming it with it uh, for a few months. Uh, and indeed, the, it solves a lot of, it's not necessarily just a stabilization. I like even switching it off sometimes. Um, just the idea that there's a, a small camera without a rolling shutter problem that you can choose uh, this tool or that tool. The stabilization has its own language. And, and also not having stabilization without a rolling shutter problem is another language which with the digital cameras kind of hard to achieve, especially the ones that are cheap, that are not necessarily cheap, but affordable, well, let's say it for filmmakers, it's not necessarily on. Uh, but, um, so it's also, um, you have a choice um, um, and it allows you to, um, I don't know, gives you freedom. Give us an example for what kind of, you know, shots you use. I, for example, I, their tool I, versus another tool. There's a very nice lens uh, Olympus has. I think that's, uh, uh, I think anyone would agree. The 25 millimeter 1.2 is a particularly beautiful lens. Huh. And uh, uh, you, you can, f if you can fit it on anything, you should. If you can take that lens and use it handheld at night, running in, a, in an un unfriendly environment, <laughs> uh, knowing that uh, the image will be very usable, it's a gift. Uh, because um, it's, um, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to achieve. And it's not like uh, th there's no camera that answers for everything. And I don't think it should be the case. Um, 
But uh, having a, this, a tool like this in your arsenal is, uh, is very nice. It liberates you and you know that uh, not just for night shooting, you know, um, not always, you, sometimes you consider bringing out the gimbal because you want it to be stable, but you don't need it to be like mm. that. You, you need a certain fluidity. Uh, so having that, uh, having the choice between the two is uh, yeah, liberating. So I think for the audience, we should explain the type of stuff you shoot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's very often fictional, but with non-professional actors well, I don't know. in a real I, environment. At the, right now, at the moment, I guess. I, I, try, I, I, hope, <laughs> I, guess. I hope nothing stays the same. Yeah. Uh, but for the sake of the content you're using, let's say you are, I'll invent a situation. Let's say you're in a train yard and you're at night and there's a group of people that are not necessarily the friendliest and you have to be very quick and not worry about low light and also you can't use a light. You have to use whatever available light comes from phones or from um, whatever source you might get or passing train. Uh, it would be very hard to be stable. You're walking on uh, gravel it would be very on your, you know, passing train tracks. Uh, and it would very, be very hard to uh, have a, a shot that actually would be much more cinematic with this camera uh, because of being able to use a stabilization and also being able to use a manual lens that you don't need to worry about rolling shutter art artifacts. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, it's a good example. <laughs> so Dirk, you also um, started using the Olympus camera out of a concrete need, is that correct? Yes, I, I was <coughs> wasting a lot of time with testing all kinds of cameras and gimbals and stabilization systems and all of a sudden I saw the, the spot, uh, the clip that uh, Janne shot and uh, I thought, how is that possible with a camera without anything else? And I was preparing a documentary, it's a mix with fiction as well, about um, the Tiergarten in Berlin, about people sitting on park benches, about situations there as well in the night, and uh, the, the, the 25 millimeter optic. Uh, I used it in winter, uh, filming in the Tiergarten with snow. And, it, and um, it's not only the practical practicability of, of uh, this very, um, compact equipment. It's I, I like the aesthetics. I, I like because that's what what is for me actually and the the most important. And uh, I don't I cannot really tell why I like it. I just like it and uh, and it just came perfectly in time. It was exactly there when I needed it. And there all the others were just like there will be something out in a few months and it was there. And then I used it and I'm totally in love with it. Yeah. Thanks for watching this segment of our roundtable discussions with filmmakers here in Copenhagen. In the next segment, we're going to talk about the evolution of filmmaking technology and the implication it has. Thanks for watching. Yeah.